you may have heard of the disability known as autism or the scientific statistics about it. Tonight, I'm going to give you more than facts. I'm going to give you the personal perspective of people who have autism. I'm going to share their feelings and personal thoughts about it. You see, for me, Nick Keel, autism awareness is a very personal issue because I myself have autism. For years, I knew something about me was different from the other kids in my class. When I was 11 years old, I discovered what it was. I had autism. I was surprised and confused at first, but I have now accepted it about myself. First of all, what is autism? It's a neurological disorder that affects the way the brain processes information and thought. It is not to be confused with mental illness or retardation. People with autism are just as capable of registering and learning information as others. Their teachers may just need to teach them in a different way in order for their autistic brains to accept it. What causes autism? Unlike some other disorders in the body, autism can be caused in a number of ways. It can be originated from mutated gene charges in the stem and cerebellum of the brain. Many genes responsible for autism are located in an area known as chromosome 7. The specific part of chromosome 7 is even named AUTS1 because that area is linked to autism. In addition to genes in the brain, autism may also result from brief periods of oxygen deprivation to the developing baby during pregnancy. Here are the statistics of how common autism is. Autism is present in 1 in 68 of American children. It is present in 1 in 42 boys and 1 in 189 girls. The average age that autism is diagnosed is at 4 years old or older. The, sorry, knowing when, <clears throat> okay, being diagnosed is important because the earlier autism is discovered, the more intervention can be given to the child, the more time the child can be given to accept it. Autism is also referred to Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, because it works just like that, in a spectrum. The lighter cases at one end don't have as large an impact on the child's behavior. For example, on this end are people with a light form of autism known as Asperger Syndrome. On the opposite end of the spectrum are deeper cases, which have a significant impact on major neurological functions, such as basic communication and social skills. The really deep cases can be so bad that the people who have them literally can't live by themselves. They always need someone with them to help them. Since autism can affect the child in major ways, it may be hard for the family to accept this difficult truth about their loved one. However, they ultimately will accept it and will do whatever they can to ensure that their loved one leads the best life they can. On the uppermost left side of this photo is autistic Quentin Moore on the left side. I will, and his family who has ac accepted his condition. I'll talk more about Quentin a little bit later. Here's how autism affected two families in their own words. While it was hard to accept that God gave us a son who had a disability, I found peace in that God would use Nick's disability to bring him glory. This quote is from Jolyn Kiel, my own mom. God bless her soul, she's sitting right there. <laughs> My mom was with me all the way ever since my diagnosis. She is still with me, and I would never have been able to put this together without her. Um, the second quote is, the difficulty of having an autistic grandchild, at least in our case, is that we cannot communicate as we do with our other grandchildren, in that Quentin has never talked. 
The blessings are that he is our grandson, and nothing, not even autism, changes that. This, this is about Clinton, the boy from the photo earlier. It, it was said by his grandfather, Pastor Gary Moore. Now I will provide you with three personal accounts of people with autism to share how they feel about their condition. The first one we shall refer to as Ashley. Ashley has been diagnosed with a high functioning case of Asperger's syndrome, which as you remember I talked about earlier. Like most people with autism, Ashley strongly dislikes it when she is judged or ignored simply because of her condition. She has written a poem to help herself feel better when she feels discouraged about how people treat her. Ashley has been kind enough to let me use this poem in my presentation. Here it is. I may be different. I may be something you're not. But don't forget what I got. I'm special in my own way. All the mean boys and girls say she is stupid. She is dumb. But they have never understood why I say I would if I could. Just because I have learning disabilities doesn't mean I can't be somebody. Being different makes me me. Ashley put a lot of work and emotion into this poem and looks at it whenever she feels like people are underestimating her because of her medical records. The second person whom I shall give an account of is Quentin. He is on the deeper, the more severe end of the, of the autism spectrum. His autism is so deeply involved that he can't speak at all. He uses pictures and an audio device to help him communicate. At first, his family didn't like the fact that he had autism, but they have come to accept it about him. They did what was best for him by placing him in a home for autistic teenagers like him. Despite his condition, Quentin is very happy and content with who he is and where he is living with his new friends. The third personal account I shall give is my own. Ever since, after I was diagnosed, my parents signed me up for autism-related programs in a regional center in Grass Valley. These sessions of mine were best scheduled in the afternoon, and since Grass Valley is quite a ways away from where we live in Yuba City, the time ended up working out that I had to leave school a little bit early in order to go there. So I skipped my whole spelling class. A lot of children at that age would probably have been happy for any excuse to skip a class. <laughs> However, I didn't like the fact that I had to skip a class. I saw it as special treatment. Something I saw it as exempting me from something just because I had a mental disability now. Like many others, I, I really didn't like it when people treated me different, even if it meant skipping a class. Now for the church views on the subject. The different denominations of the church have very similar beliefs when it comes to disabilities such as autism. The Methodist Church urges society to receive the gifts of persons who have disabilities. This means that even though our gifts are different, they can still be put to use. The Catholic Church says that every person is created in the image of God and is precious. They are saying that God created each of us as a unique design. The Orthodox Church states that Christians can, cannot claim to love God without loving everyone else, which includes people with disabilities. And the even Evangelical Church in, encourages the autistics ourselves not to let what people call us hurt us. A lot of people would be offended by even using the term autistic because they think it says, you know, that's, they have autism, that's all there is to them. But it's not all that there is to them. In addition to the church views, Plenty of Bible scriptures are relevant to this subject. These, these four verses here were, were given to me by my father, Pastor Todd Keogh of Crossroads Community Church, who occasionally 
calls me out when doing his sermons, but now it's me doing the calling out. Right there, folks. <laughs> first verse is Proverbs 16, 9. In his heart a man plants his course, but the Lord determines his steps. This verse means the Lord has a chosen destiny for each of us, and our destinies include everything, including our disabilities. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body as he chose. This verse says that God is in charge of who is part of his body. And that means he accepts everyone. In Romans 12, 10, and 3, honor one another above yourself. Share with God's people who are in need. This verse directly says to care for everyone, including those who have needs of all kinds. And finally, John 9, 3, God allowed us to be the way... Oh, John 9, 3, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. God allowed us to be the way we are, so that our disabilities can be used for a purpose. Now that I've shared the personal accounts of the people and how the church and Bible sees this, what are the next steps you can take in order to, in order to comfort those with autism? Well, if you see or meet someone with autism, just reach out to them and include them in your lives. Treat them kindly like you would any other person, while helping them with their difficulties as needed. And as for the families, if they're not too happy about the situation like Quinton's once were, you, you can try to encourage them that this is all for God's plan, and you may refer to scripture to back up this view. There are many things that you can do to help those with autism. But the most important gift you can give them is very simple. It's acceptance. Ashley wants to be accepted for who she is. Quinton has been accepted by his family. And both my family and myself have accepted my condition. It's not a bad thing. And we don't want to be divided and treated differently than you. It's not our differences that divide us. It's our inability to recognize and accept those differences. I don't see autism as a curse or even a disorder. It's just part of who I am. There are hundreds of autistics or people with autism, whichever they would prefer, all over the world who would agree with me on this. We see autism as just what makes us unique, and we want the rest of the world to see it that way as well. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions?